Hi everyone, I'm Jane and today we are going to paint a geode crystal. Before we get started, make sure you check out the video description below for a list of materials that I've used in today's painting. But as always, please feel free to use whatever materials you have or whatever materials you prefer. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so that you can paint with me every week. Now let's get started. All right, today I am starting with my new favorite product, the Fredericks Canvas Pad. This is an awesome, awesome product. Remember, this is sheets of real canvas. It is not paper, but as always, you can use any kind of surface that you prefer. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is take a pencil. This is just a regular pencil, and we're gonna draw our geode shape on here. Now, a couple of things. You might be able to see some lines on here. Yes, <laughs> I already drew my geode on here and then erased it because I have a lot on my mind today and I started talking to you and sketching my geode before I even hit record on my camera. It's just one of those days today. So I need this painting quite a bit. <laughs> All I'm doing is giving it a very, just kind of a very general shape. Just decide where you want your geode, how you want it shaped. Do you want it smooth? Do you want it angular? You know, whatever. There's a million types of geodes. They all have different shapes and colors and textures. So you can't go wrong. Please don't feel like you need to make yours look exactly like mine. Now I wanna sketch out the interior. This is where all of the sparkly crystals are gonna be. And you might be able to see I kinda had it right in here. I just kind of felt out where I thought I might want it. I'm not afraid of putting it in and then deciding later that that's completely different from what I want because, in fact, I feel like that mirrors that too much. I might, because I can change it at any time. So don't feel like you have to get it right the first time and don't feel like whatever you end up sketching has to end up being what you paint. So to start painting, I have some burnt umber and some Payne's gray, just a little bit of each. I'm gonna start by putting the rocky outline on my geode. I'm gonna use my half inch flat brush and I did wet this in the jar and wiped it on the edge. I'm just gonna loosely mix these colors together. It doesn't need to be real perfect. It can be kind of marbled. I'm not looking for anything in particular, just a little mixture of the two colors. I'm gonna use the tip of my brush and just kind of start like that. See, I'm not drawing a smooth line and that helps me get a little rocky texture. Now I don't have a real clear idea of what I want this geode to look like. I know what colors I wanna see, so I've already picked out my colors, but aside from that, I don't really know and I'm not worried about that because, you know, a geode, like I said, they all look so different. I'm just gonna make, you know, parts of this wider and parts of it more narrow. Like maybe you're seeing more of the edge of the rock around the side or, you know, whatever, however you interpret it. But because geodes all look so different, I'm not worried, you know, that mine looks like a real geode or not, but also, since this is kind of a meditative, almost like a mandala type painting, it can be an abstract painting. It can, you know, come away looking nothing like a geode and just like an abstract painting that, you know, was meditative for you to create. And that's really what I want you to focus on. I do not want you to focus on whether or not your painting actually looks like a geode. I think this is a pretty good start. I'm just gonna widen it out here a bit more maybe. And since I haven't painted the background yet, it's okay if I, if this line gets all weird, I can cover it up later. If it's too wide for me somewhere, I can cover that up later. I think that's a good place to start. Now I have chosen Diox Purple as the main color for my geode. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of that and just a poke of white, not a lot. Really, all I'm looking to do here is brighten that purple a little bit and make it not so transparent. Diox tends to be pretty transparent. About like that. Still using my half inch, I did clean it off. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my brush, put it right into that brown. See that right there into it. Press it about half foot pressure and just lightly drag this color around the edge. So it is kind of blending with that black brown or with the, sorry, Payne's gray and brown and that's okay. And it's even okay if that color mixes and you know kind of gets carried down into the geode that's perfectly fine the less you worry about in this painting i feel like the more successful you'll be with it just keeping that going around i'm not worried about what this bottom edge looks like at all Now I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna grab some white. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start right into the purple. See that right there? About half foot pressure. And I'm just gonna slide it. Get those little bumps filled in there, those little white spots. I'm not worried if there's a hard line between the colors because you know, geodes have low banding of colors anyway. Let's get just a little bit more white. Same thing, I'm gonna start up into here and pull it over. The only thing I'm focusing on is making sure to cover the texture of the canvas. All right, I cleaned off my brush because I do want a fairly pure white now, even though I picked up a tiny bit of that purple, it's okay. Again, right in there. This is just gonna be the last little band before I start working on the next section on the, on the geode. If you need some geode inspiration, like I said, look online, see what you can find. But also, if you want you know, some geodes that are very colorful, really unique patterns and shapes. Look up specifically agate geodes. Agate geodes are incredible. I'm gonna grab a little bit more purple. I need some of that color down here in this corner. This one is purple, so, you know, I guess it's kind of an amethyst geode, but Amethyst geodes, I feel like they're just a little bit basic looking. For me, they're not exciting. They're not all purple like this with, you know, the purple and the white and then the bright purple in the middle. Cleaned off my brush, just gonna get some white. They're mostly kind of brownish, brown and white around the outer edge with just the purple in the middle. And that didn't feel very exciting to me. So I don't really care what a real amethyst geode looks like. I'm gonna do this however I want. I just picked up some white. I'm just kind of taking this through here. Just to give me a good base for the next part that I'm gonna do. Although, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. But I'm in the zone and it seemed like the thing to do. The next part I do want to be able to put on a little bit, uh, not really smoother, but I don't want a lot of canvas texture. So that's why I'm just kind of painting white on here. 
I'm doing it very loosely though. All right, and down here in this corner. Except then I forgot there was another part I wanted to do first and that's totally fine. So I have some phthalo green here next to my Diox purple. Those of you who follow me on Instagram, you know what color is about to happen here. So I'm gonna pull some Diox and some phthalo green together. For those of you who are new to this color mixture, prepare to be mind blown when I show you that we just mixed navy blue, a very dark, beautiful navy blue. And I have some matte medium and I'm just gonna dunk into it. For this painting, I would say matte medium is pretty important. If you don't have it, as always, I highly recommend you get some, but you can try and do it without it. I'm gonna do the same thing, just using the tip of my brush. I'm gonna start into this white and start applying this color. It generally follows the shape of the other lines of color, but it doesn't have to be exact. The color changes as we go around and that's okay. Let's mix a little bit more. I'm just gonna darken it in a few places. Maybe widen it a little bit right here. I really like this color. And we can let it trail off. In these other areas, it's so light here because I have all that white paint that's wet. And that's fine. All right, I'm gonna grab a little bit more purple and mix it in the white. I still have that navy on my brush. Let's go right up into it, same thing smooth around because we already painted that white I can come off of that line too see that and let there be a little bit of a white gap in between I like that a lot I'm gonna leave that and now I'm gonna take just a little poke of matte medium on the tip of my brush I'm gonna zoom in here tight so you can see what I'm doing. If you have any lines that you don't like, they're just too hard, you don't wanna get rid of it and blend it out completely, but you don't want it that hard, that little point of matte medium, the tip of my brush, and no pressure. No pressure at all, see my bristles are not bending. And it really just kind of scrapes those together, maybe even gives you a couple of other lines. See how it changed that? There, much better. Let's get some more white. I'm just gonna pick up white. Still have all those colors on here. And, well, you know what? Yeah, it's still adding some color and I already did it, so I'm just gonna keep going, but decided I want this a little bit different, so I'm just gonna kinda put it right here where I've got that wider area and let it trail out there. Actually, I need just a little flavor of it right here. Not much. But what I wanna do now is I've got a few lines up here, but it's not really banding like you see in geodes. So I wanna focus on that and see if I can kinda of amp up the feel of, of banding in the minerals. So I'm gonna to go to my long liner and let's get some of this dark navy color kind of up here between the purple and the rock. I think that will be a good transition between those two colors. So my navy, just a little bit of extra water. I'm not trying to make the paint flow. I'm just, you know, making it a little bit smoother. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna mix some matte medium in it. I'm gonna zoom you in here real quick while I do this part and then I'll zoom you out while I do the whole thing. So I've got my blue and see how I'm holding my brush? Very loosely, very, very loosely. I'm just gonna kind of start somewhere and Add a little bit of this color in there. Just like that, you can do it in multiple lines if you like. 
you know, two lines side by side with a little bit of the other color behind them, kind of between them. And if you want to smooth out the line that you get, just dunk into a bit of matte medium and then just go along that line, just the edge of it with just that matte medium and see how it's just smoothing out that line. I like to have kind of a, a mix between really soft lines and nice crisp lines. I feel like that makes everything a little more interesting. Let's go in and just grab a little point of white and then I'll zoom you out. Cause I know you can't see that color real well, but I've also decided I want a bit of a lighter stripe, maybe just right here next to it. I am overlapping that blue ever so slightly. And that purple is actually still wet, so I'm picking a bit of it up. And that's nice, I like that. A little point of matte medium, and I'm gonna smooth out the edge of that white line. One thing I wanted to say about painting in geodes, you know, even if it doesn't look like a geode or what you think a geode looks like, it's gonna be, you know, a lovely abstract painting that hopefully, hopefully you had a meditative time painting it, an enjoyable, you know, bit of you time. And then when you look at it afterwards, you can still enjoy it as just a beautiful piece of abstract art. See how now I've got a little bit of that banding in there, just from adding some of the dark, some of the white, a little matte medium to soften them here and there, and painting on top of that purple while it's still wet. If your purple's still dried, that's okay. If you're concerned that you're not gonna get to the purple before it dries, then do the purple, then do your banding, then do your next layer of color, then do some more banding. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side using that navy just kind of go in between the, the rock color and the purple. I'm slightly twisting my brush like this as I go, very gently. What that does is it helps get all the paint off the brush in the first place, but it also gives the line a bit of an organic kind of wobble like you saw up here. And that way I just don't have to work so hard to get a really organic shape. I don't have to focus on going like this with my brush, which can kind of end up giving me a really unnatural zigzag shape. So just gently as you go, roll it and then roll it back the other way. And I've got my white, again, going over the edge of that blue, slightly rolling my brush. I know that rolling is difficult for a lot of people. Some people just don't, they just don't understand the rolling and that's okay. If you're one of those who just has a hard time with rolling the brush, then I don't want you to do it because the point of this painting is to enjoy, not to stress, not to struggle. Do what works for you. If you don't have matte medium, then you know, just do it however you need to, to get the look that you want. Just going back and forth between white and matte medium here. If you have glazing medium, you can use that. That's not terrible, so I'm actually gonna stick with some white. And maybe I'll just do another one here, kind of following where I've already got some lines. 
and this paint is dry right here so it is not blending sometimes my white line is you know a little more prominent than others sometimes it fades out almost entirely a little matte medium but I think that that makes it look a little bit more natural you know I don't want like race car stripes in here or anything you know Okay, so I think I'm happy with the banding that I have through here. You can go and add as much banding as you like in yours. You can work on it for hours, days, whatever. I am gonna move down to this area now and do a little bit of banding in here. All right, I'm going back into that dark, dark navy color. And I'm really gonna amp up that dark navy in here. Nice heavy pressure there so I can really lay down a good amount of that paint. I want that area to be really quite dark. Because I think that would be really interesting. I'm not taking this all the way to the edge. Which automatically helps me create another band. And let that taper off a bit there. Little matte medium, I'm just going to smooth that out ever so slightly. This part really is so relaxing. Even if you don't have, you know, good brushes. That's one thing I hear a lot, especially when I'm using the long liner. Well, I can't do that because I don't have any good brushes. My brushes are puffy or, you know, whatever. I think that that's okay for this painting because a puffy brush is going to create more than one line at the same time. And that is kind of exciting. That's just going to help you get some extra banding. Let's take a bit of that over here. A little matte medium. Good. Now I'm going to poke into the white again. And let's do a little bit of a white band just below it. And I feel like, yeah, I think that kind of navy green color here is still a little wet. So it's blending a bit. Either way is fine. I don't really care. A little matte medium to smooth it out. Take your time. Again, this is one of those areas that can be tedious if you don't have the patience. You know, if you tend to get bored with doing the same thing over and over again, then this part can be tedious. So instead of allowing it to be tedious, like I said, I want you to almost feel like it's like deep breathing, right? With each line, with each ring, you're kind of relaxing a little bit more and taking yourself deeper into the painting and into the painting experience.
feel like I need just a little bit more white in my line over here. And then I kind of feel like the banding is about done. I mean, I might add a little more later, but as of right now, I'm fairly happy with it. All right, so that's what we have so far. I wanna let this dry, but also I feel like I need to take a little bit of a break from it. And I will come back in about 10, 15 minutes and we'll continue on to the next section. Like I said before, when I get ready to switch gears, I usually have to take a break. And this next section is gonna to be totally different. So that's kind of the gear shift in this painting. All right, this area is pretty dry. There's a tiny hint of moisture in there, but I think we're good to go ahead and move on to the next section. So I'm still sticking with my half inch flat and I'm gonna grab again some of that navy color. It really doesn't matter if it leans a little more purple or a little more green, it doesn't matter. Just get some of that. And then this is where matte medium comes in really, really helpful. I'm gonna mix it with a ton of matte medium. See that? That's mostly matte medium. So it's gonna be a very transparent color. Now what I wanna do is, notice how I'm holding my brush. I could almost drop it. So we wanna hold our brush very loosely. I'm gonna start right about where that color ends. And I'm just gonna do these kind of short hash marks that move toward the center. Now that color is too dark. So, I just grabbed a big old scoop of matte medium and I'm gonna break it up. See, I'm taking, that's about what I'm looking for right there. See, I'm taking it toward that pencil mark that I made. I'm only picking up matte medium at this point because I have so much paint on my brush. Just these short brush strokes pointing toward the center. There's little lines in there and I like that. So what I'm doing here is I've noticed in a lot of geodes, certainly not in all of them, you'll see toward the middle, this area that looks like crystals, but it's not the, you know, the interior crystals. It's these little pokey bits that are just kind of Maybe they used to be interior crystals and then the inside filled in with the, the minerals again. But that's what we're doing here. So we're gonna add some little white crystals here and that might seem kind of intimidating to you right now, but it's a pretty easy technique and my pencil line still shows there, but really I'm not worried about it. I don't think you'll be able to see it once I'm done. And if you do, oh well. I'm not worried about it. Don't forget down here in the corner. Always pointing toward the center. That nice transparent color. But notice it's pointing toward the center, but all my brush strokes kind of go a different direction. You know, they're, they're angled a bit. All right, and now I wanna let that dry before we move on. So while this center area dries, let's go ahead and add some texture and highlight and shadow to our rock. So to do the rock, I'm gonna use my number eight filbert, and this is my puffy old one, but it really doesn't matter. I wet it in my jar a little, but then I wiped it on a paper towel because I just want it barely, barely damp. I'm gonna load up with my brown and Payne's gray and I did get me a little bit more matte medium there. Let's get just a little poke of white and just lighten that color up slightly. A little matte medium. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna kind of dash. So it's really similar to what we did in the Buddha. So I laid down a little swipe of that color and then just with the tip of my brush, I'm just kind of breaking it up. So swipe, break it up. And we're gonna do the same technique later when we move to the crystals on the inside. Swipe, break it up. 
So I'm not actually covering all of that first color and that's okay. And because I haven't painted the background yet, it doesn't matter if this keeps getting bigger and bigger. It doesn't even matter if I accidentally, you know, go like that. Haven't painted that. Doesn't matter. Little blob of color. And I know because this color is still quite dark, it's kind of hard to see that, but I promise you will be able to see that much better in just a bit. I'm not worrying about taking this color all the way down toward the purple blue area. All right, let's throw a little more white in there. Well, that was maybe a little bit more than I wanted. Much lighter color, good amount of matte medium. Let's do that again. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna plop down a bit of that color. See that, it's a full brush stroke. And then with just the tip of my brush, I'm just kind of breaking it up. See that? Blop of color. Break it up. Blop, break it up. Kind of get that little mantra going through your head right now. Blop, break it up and just enjoy this little process. You don't have to put this color on everything. You can have little sections where there is no highlight color. Maybe it's where the colors, or the minerals in the rock are a little bit darker or maybe there's just not light hitting it. A little more white, I'm gonna bring that in. Pretty light color there, see that? It's just barely got some of that gray in it. Same thing, but much smaller brush stroke. So a small blob, but still going back and breaking it up. Remember, just like always, when we're highlighting and I tell you the lighter the color is, the less of it we're going to apply. And don't worry if you feel like it's gotten too light, lighter than you wanted it to be, because we're going to add one more color. I'd rather have you add too much highlight right now and get it where you want it than not add enough. And by enough, please understand that when I say enough, I don't mean as much as I've added. <laughs> I mean as much as you want to see. However much you want to see is enough. All right, I've cleaned off my brush. I'm gonna get some more of my Burnt Umber Payne's Gray, but I want quite a dark color now. So I'm gonna come in and grab a little bit of my Thalo Green because the Thalo colors mixed with Burnt Umber create a very beautiful, very dark color. Look at that. That's almost black little matte medium. And this is gonna be our darkest color. So I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see this dark color in action. Right here, see how it's kind of transparent between the, the stone color and the purple? That's where I'm really gonna focus this, these super short, light brush strokes. See that my brush is barely bending. And I can take it up into the rocks a bit. So this is what I mean. If you feel like you had too much highlight, knock some of it back with this dark color. And even just little unexpected bits of it, like that here and there. So that's what I'm gonna do with this dark color all through here. And then I feel like I'm, well, I might want to just kind of pop a few much brighter highlights in a couple of spaces. And the reason for that is I want to make sure that everywhere from the center of the geode to the outer edge, we have all of our values accounted for. So what I mean is 
On the outside here, the rock area, I'm putting this color that is super dark. It is almost black. It's a chromatic black. So in the very center of the geode, I want a color that is very, very dark, almost black. In the, the midway between the edge and the center, I want a color that is very, very dark. So I've got that there. So there, there, and there. I'm also going to do the same thing with white. You know, I want really bright highlights in the middle that are white or very, very close to white. And I'm going to have the same thing on the outer edge here, either white highlights or very, very close to white. And we've got the white in the middle too. I feel like that will kind of help you keep your viewer traveling throughout the painting. You know, if it's just dark on the edge and bright in the middle, they're going to look right in the middle and that's all they're going to see. So you want to make sure they've got some nice dark and bright contrasts on the outside to look at as well as in the interior and the very middle of the painting. I think that's about it for that dark color. I'm going to go to my number four bright. I'm actually going to do those bright bits now. I just picked up a little bit of white and a little bit of matte medium and just a few little bright points in here. Nice bright highlights. Super short brush strokes. Okay, I feel like that's good. All right, this is pretty much dry now and we can continue and make our little white crystals in here. I'm gonna use my number 10 round brush. And what I'm gonna do is come into my white. I'm just gonna stick the point of my brush. I'm trying not to let my matte medium flow everywhere. Stick the point of my brush right into it. See how I just picked up a little bit on the end? And then I'm gonna come right into the matte medium See, I just kind of rolled and filled the rest of my brush with matte medium. All right, now to do our crystals, I'm gonna use the tip of my brush as the point to make the crystals. So I'm just gonna kind of start here and swipe back. Pick up matte medium whenever I feel like I need it. See, that's it. Very simple. And we'll just get up to here, right up to that line. If you cross over it a little bit, it's okay. Just kind of wipe it with your finger. Just gonna zoom you out there a bit while I work on these. Again, it's another one of those areas that could be quite uh, tedious and monotonous if you let it. Everything points to the middle, just like the color we put below it. And where that paint was a little thick, a little bit dark, I can either choose to not worry about it and just have a darker area, or I can just put a little heavier paint over it. All I'm gonna worry about right now is just the, the first layer. I'm not blending out any lines. You know, I'm getting some hard lines in here, but that's what's helping this feel like crystals is those little, those little hard lines between the brush strokes. Sometimes I just pick up matte medium because I've got a little bit of white on my brush. 
And if I just pick up matte medium, then I just get a thinner area, a little bit of a lighter white. That's kind of wild looking right there with a the little rectangle. So I'm just going to pat some white over that. Whenever you've got a little spot where it looks weird, where it moves from the previous section into this section, just cover it with some white. Don't forget your little areas down here and keep forgetting about these guys. If this little transition spot here still looks strange, if you feel like it looks strange later, you can just put, you know, some more of those bands around it, like we did around the edge here. And that will, you know, look really cool, but it will also serve to hide that area. It's whatever you prefer. I'm just picking up a little bit of white now. I'm just gonna make a few areas in here that are nice and bright because that's gonna help it feel like, you know, either thicker crystals or maybe just it's sparkling a little bit more, but it's just giving a bit of variation, which is nice. You want variation. And it feels really nice to just come in here and kind of slash colors however and wherever. I'm going to go back to my long liner and back into my navy blue. So mix those colors together really good. Please don't stress if your blue color ends up a little bit different than any other time that you've used it in this painting. That's not a problem. I'm going to get a good amount of matte medium. Mix that in there. And I'm going to come in here and just kind of start kind of scribbling a little bit of a, a zigzaggy line. See that? Nothing real specific. Sometimes I go up into the white, sometimes I don't. The one thing I don't want is a really uniform, I don't want, you know, like a circle. I want a really rough edge here. And however you need to, to get that edge. See, sometimes I'm like squidging it side to side. Sometimes I just kind of dash at it. Sometimes it kind of bounces. I'm picking up a bit of that white and that's giving me some variation in here, which is nice. I'm taking that part way in. not worried about what this bottom edge looks like. I'm not worried about making sure that all of the white spots are filled in. I'm only worried about this edge. 
up here. Now I'm going to come in and mix a bit of white in there, some matte medium. I don't want it quite that light. And I'm going to come back around here and just kind of, I'm almost scribbling, just lightening up the bottom of this shape. I want the edge where it meets the white to stay nice and dark, but maybe just a little bit lighter at the bottom. Now I'm focusing on filling in all those little holes. If I wanted to make, you know, part of the line wider, you know, more into the middle, I can do that. See, just got my long liner flat and just kind of squidging it back and forth. I'm not being tidy here. And that's not out of boredom for the for the technique. It's just because I don't need real, you know, perfect crystal looking areas right here. And if you did this quick enough with enough paint and some matte medium, then that first navy color should still be a little wet and you'll pick some of that up and that'll help blend into this lighter color you're doing. And in, for the most part, mine is still wet. See right there, it was quite wet. But there's a few areas that are kind of dry and I think the combination between the two of them, you know, the drier areas and the, the areas where it's blending more is really nice, I like that.
again, still not worried about this bottom edge. Because we're going to go back to our half inch flat in just a minute and add another ring of color. Back to my half inch flat, a little bit of white, and again, right into that color, press it flat, and let's drag that along, kind of following the shape that we've got. some places I'm taking it quite close to where these crystals start and in some place some places I'm leaving them quite a bit of room I had picked up a, quite a bit of that color so I washed off my brush more white right into that. Let's see if we can get rid of some of that blue on this edge. Keep it a little closer to a, a truer, truer white. Truer white. That's kind of hard to say. There we go. All right, we're going to let that dry completely and then we'll come back and we'll start on the crystals in the center. All right, this is all dry now, so I'm going to paint the interior here with just Diox Purple. And actually, I am going to grab just a little bit of white again because the Diox is so transparent. There we go. Still pretty dark. And I'm going to fill this in just very loosely. I know I can't really see where that white is but I'm not worried about that right now see so I'm gonna go nice and soft around the edge there that way if I go with a hard line around the edge then it might be a little bit harder to cover up later Let's actually now pull some green in. Let's get that nice dark navy color again. And let's decide what areas of the geode we want to be the darkest. So I kind of feel like maybe this top corner. So I'm just gonna kind of put it at the edge there and then dash it. So again, it's that plop of color, break it up 
plop the color, break it up. And that is going to help us maintain some of that first purple we put down. Hopefully you can still see that in there. And I feel like in the back here, in the way back down here, I kind of feel like that's like the floor of the geode. And so everything there would be taking light But back here in the middle and up at the top. I feel like that's more shadowed by the top edge of the geode. And then I can just take a little hint of this color and just kind of dash it very gently throughout because I don't want any one section of this interior to be, you know, solid one color or another. Little, little bits of it throughout. All right, I've cleaned off my brush. I'm going to go back into my purple and get a bit more white in there. Let's start getting some of our highlights in there. Some of the little bright spots on the crystals. A little bit of matte medium. And again, remember, hold your brush far back. Really loose because that's going to help us get really gentle looking brush strokes. So still, plop it down. I know that's not much different, but it's going to be enough to help us start building those highlights. Plop it down, break it up. Let's go just a hint lighter. Plop it down, there we go. Break it up. So see all of those little brush strokes and I'm breaking it up are coming off of that first one. So I plop it down, little break up, little break up. Place these with intention. You know, wherever you feel like your crystal is really going to be taking a good amount of light, that's where I want you to put these. There's not a right and wrong. Don't worry about light source. Don't worry about, you know, would the light be hitting it there? Would it be dark? Put it where you want to see it. going to take little dashes of it back in here like I said even to these places where where I said it was going to be darker maybe that's hanging down from the front that little light bit little hints back here even though this is our dark area there might be the odd crystal that's kind of catching a bit of a glint from the light let's go lighter a little matte medium in there remember crystals have these very smooth flat faces that's why I'm using these nice, short, angular brush strokes. A little bit lighter. I'm about to go down to a smaller brush here in just a minute. Stand back. Make sure you stand back. When you're up close, you might look at it and think, oh, this just looks like a bunch of blobs. But when you stand back, you might start to see little crystal formations. Just 
kind of using the corner of my brush there. You see how I'm holding my brush? Kind of like that right there on the edge. In fact, I think I'm going to do that around most of it, just around most of this edge. Not all of it. And if I decide I don't like part of it, I can take it away later. Oh, we don't want a fuzzy edge like that. There we go. All right, I'm gonna go down to my number eight bright and I have wet this in my jar and I'm gonna pick a little bit of white and mix it into that same area so it's nice and bright for the highlights on the crystals. Mm, that paint's getting pretty thick. It's kind of getting hard to take a highlight. So I cleaned off my brush. I have a little extra water on it. I'm gonna mix into some of this white paint. I don't want it to flow. I don't want it running all over the place. I just want it a little bit thinner. Just pull some paint into it until it's not flowing there. But see, it's pretty thin. You could even use soft body paint if you like. I'm going to hold my brush about, it's about three inches from the canvas, the corners pointing at it. I'm going to use the top of my finger and just kind of, it's going to start looking like little bits of reflection in there, particularly in the back, not so much in the front. And, you know, if you get too much, like I always say, don't worry about it. It's fine. All right, I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit. That paint is very thick, very wet. As soon as it dries a bit, we'll come finish up our highlights. All right, so this is all pretty dry now, and I've actually decided that I'm gonna go back into my navy color, just a little bit of it. And a little bit of matte medium. And let's just make sure that our dark area is nice and dark. But see, because I used matte medium and thinned it down, some of those little sparkles are going to stay. They're just going to be a bit darker. If you want to cover some of them up completely, just mix a heavier mixture and don't put any matte medium in it. See, like right there, we can pretty much come in and just cover that. We just want to make sure that we've got some areas in here that are quite dark. That's going to really push them into the background. Sometimes if we have a hard time making light colors seem light enough, it's because the colors around them aren't dark enough. So if we want to make these highlights really pop, we're going to make the dark really dark. I'm liking that much better now that we've got a little bit of a darker color 
in there, here and there. We can even just take a little bit of it. I'm just gonna put it at the base of some of these. I thinned that down pretty good with matte medium. It's just a suggestion of that deeper shadow color. All right, back to my number eight bright. And let's mix up a nice light color. It still has a little bit of purple in it, but it's pretty light. Wipe some of that off. I don't want a thick application of paint. Hold my brush loosely and let's get some highlights going. A little swipe of that color. Maybe there's another one here. It's basically what we're doing with these little rectangular bits is we're saying, there's a face, a little crystal face right there. Don't want canvas texture. So a little bit of matte medium kind of smooths that out. I want you to enjoy this part and remember that you can't go wrong here. If you get too many crystals, if you get, you know, just anything you don't like, you can take it away later. Don't try to take it away right now. Just focus on getting that color in there, enjoying the way that a simple brush stroke like that can make it look like now there's a little crystal face there. Once you feel like you've got as much of this color in here as you want, then stand back, look at it, and decide if you need to take any of it away. Let's go lighter. I just plucked up some white and just loosely mixed it quickly with what's on my brush. Little matte medium, just break up some of these. Felt like they were starting to look a little too rectangular. It's looking a little bit better. Matt 
about medium again. And let's get, I'm just picking up some white, but there's a little bit of purple in the mix. Right around the edge here, I'm gonna start covering up some of that and then breaking up the line. So it almost looks like these crystals that I put on there are, you know, they're part, they're cut in with the, the crystals cut and those little bits are polished you can tell that it's all coming from the same piece of rock. If that makes any sense, I don't think, that probably didn't make sense. But if you look at a bunch of images, I think you'll see what I'm going for. So a little bit of white right here. Very light application or very light pressure so that I lay down the paint thickly and it covers that purple. And if I feel like that transition is just a little too abrupt, I can mix in a little bit more purple. You know, and kind of pull a little purple down. Put a little highlight on it or something. That's what's great about painting geodes. It can be just like a tree, you know? There's so many different kinds of trees out there and they all look so different. It can be whatever you need it to be, whatever you want it to be. And that's exactly the same here. If you have interference paints or metallic paints or even just, uh, what is it, iridescent medium, that could be really fun to play around with in here. If you like metallic-y things in your paintings, I'm not usually too big on metallic. I don't know why. I think it would certainly be good in here, but just not something that I've been into, so I haven't, you know, felt the need to spend a lot of money on metallic paint because I probably won't use it. When I see people use metallics, I always think, man, that's so cool, that's so pretty. But then when it actually comes to possibly buying metallic paint, I'm like, hmm, eh, I won't use it. I'm gonna go to my number four bright and just a little bit of white. I'm just gonna add some thick. So it's kind of thick and that is really gonna help it seem like a bright, sparkle of color. Just come in here and touch wherever you feel like you need to see that little bright point. Put as many of them in as you want. The more you have, the more sparkly it's going to seem. If you feel like you need to 
you know, flick the little spots over it again, do it. even back in here, little points. I am going to flick just a little more. I'm still using my number four. And I'm mostly just going to flick it here at the bottom. There we go. You know what? I'm actually okay that I'm getting those little streaky splatters. <laughs> I kind of like them. They add a little dimension of, you know, kind of an unexpected element that I think is kind of fun. But if you didn't like them, just wipe it away with your finger and dab some of your darker color over it. It's not a big deal. All right, now we need to decide what we're going to do with this background. Our color here that we're really looking at is purple, I'm kind of leaning towards yellow kind of gold back here. So I have some yellow oxide here and a little bit of fresh white and I'm going to mix up a very pale color. I'm not going to use this yellow oxide straight because I feel like that's pretty aggressive. I'm going to mix it in here, get kind of a pale gold type color. So I'm going to start filling this in and when I get to the rock, I can start making decisions about what parts of the rock stay and what parts of the rock go. I don't know if I told you that the reason I chose yellow is because it's the complement to purple. And a lot of times in geodes, like if you, if you purchase geodes that have been, you know, cut and polished, a lot of times they come with gold on the outer edge. But I didn't want to make the outer edge gold. Heavy paint application there to cover that up. So we'll put the gold here on the background. So as I come around my rock, I can cut into it and make any bits smaller if I need, or make it angle more or less, whatever I need to do to change the rocks. have an idea for something I want to do on the background here. Since I decided I wanted metallic gold, but like I said, I don't have any metallic paint because I never use it. But I do have leftover gold leaf from when we did the, the gold tree quite a while ago. Now if you want to make your background gold. You don't have to use gold leaf like I'm going to use. You can use whatever you have, whatever you like, whether it's, you know, gold paint or, you know, interference paint, like I said, or maybe you add a little bit of, I can never remember what that stuff is called, iridescent medium to a paint color to make it look like metallic gold. Totally, totally up to you. So I'm gonna finish this part up and then I'm gonna let this dry before I add the gold leaf.
All right, I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit and then I'll be back to add the gold leaf. All right, my background color here is dry now and I'm gonna add the gold leaf. I still have this leftover gold leaf, these little bits. I actually wish I had the sheets. You can get it in like a flat sheet and that would be a little more convenient, but I'm just gonna use what I have. I'm gonna use some matte medium to stick it down. So I'm just gonna pour it out of my palette right there. I'm gonna use my half inch flat brush, pick it up and I'm just gonna cover all of this gold with a bit of matte medium. It doesn't have to be real perfect. If little bits of this color show through, that's okay. That's why I painted it this color. It's exactly why I chose this color. I just want to make sure not to get it on my geode on the rock. And maybe I'll stop there. And this stuff is a mess. If you're going to use this stuff, prepare to make a mess. I'm just going to spread it on there lightly. Tamp it down with my finger. And when it dries, when it's completely dry, I can rub off any little bits that aren't stuck down. But for now, I'm just going to make sure I cover as much of this as possible. So don't try to rub the gold to stick it down. I'm just kind of pressing. If you rub it, it kind of balls up and comes off. And then you get like a, a weird texture that's kind of hard to, to manage. I just kind of pressed it down there. <laughs> now I have a mess all over my hands. And I'm going to finish up here the exact same way. I'm sure I don't need to state it outright, but please do not use a blow dryer to make this dry faster. I mean, you could if you want, you know, a gold flecked house. <laughs> you can use your hair dryer, that's fine. So I can see that I've still got quite a bit of that paint color showing, which is actually nice. I like, I like that color with this gold. But if you don't, then once it's dry and you've wiped off all of the excess gold, just add a little bit more matte medium or you know, whatever it was that you used to stick the gold down and apply a little bit more. So I'm going to let this dry for maybe about an hour or so. All right, this should all be dry now. Let's just kind of start wiping it off. Don't pick at it with a nail or anything. Just rub it with the tip of your finger and kind of burnish it down. Shouldn't take too much effort. There's a little bit of texture left, but I think that's okay. 
it might be best to use a spray varnish on something like this. I think overall I'm pretty happy with it, so I'm going to go ahead and sign it. And there is your geode crystal. I hope that this was a relaxing and enjoyable experience for you. Make sure you find me on Instagram so that you can share your version of this painting with me. A huge thank you to my sponsor Frederick's Canvas for providing the awesome canvas pad that I used in today's painting. And a huge thank you to you, as always, for painting with me, everyone. I'll see you next time.